you, Shibiraj. And um, afterwards, please go to the website, spend some more time understanding what the government of India has to offer for those of you, especially some of the students who are thinking of becoming entrepreneurs. It's not easy being an entrepreneur. It's very, very difficult, but take the first step. So with that, I'm going to ask Mary to speak. Um, I also have some slides, so if you could pull those up for Global Waterworks. What I want to do is uh, build on what my colleagues have done here and just sharing some quick wins, some small ways that we can all uh, go further faster. And it's based on our experience as a, a team. We're based in Chicago and uh, formed the company Global Waterworks. And next slide, please. Uh, because we um, realized uh, the great shortage we're about to face, uh, we, we joined a group in Pakistan that was going to deliver water and jobs and they told us that the technology was 30 years old and we said wow you know there's so much efficiency all of you have shared and um we could do much better than a 30-year-old technology if we were to uh, benefit from today's energy innovations. So we joined groups around the world that are known for their water leadership, like Israel and uh, uh, the Water Environment Federation and uh, uh, the reuse groups and uh, the um, International Water Association to see what was going on and who was making water work because we uh, clearly felt a bit overwhelmed and surprised to hear that there was such a gap ahead of us as a world that we could potentially make a dent in because technology we knew existed to give visibility. It was happening in every other sector of the world. So next slide, please. What we discovered was that uh, the challenges were immense. Hun thousands of organizations, every city has a sustainability group, every state, you know, every country, you have the World Bank, you have every different organization has water initiatives, Rotary, 40,000 chapters, and uh, all of you experts were out there working diligently, but uh, inefficient because you other people were doing similar things, you know, and you didn't know that the other one was maybe making that progress. And so we said, uh, we need a way to bring people together to showcase who's making water work and how we can uh, share knowledge and move forward rather than in these horizontal paths. And so if you could move to the next slide. Um, what we uh, also realized was that tremendous investment is happening. In the U.S., it's about a trillion. Here in India, you just announced 50 billion for drinking water. And uh, the changes that need to be made in a very short amount of time are immense. Next slide. Um, and what uh, that looks like is quite different from how the water sector works today. And it looks like uh, enterprise IT, where communications and technology and um, infrastructure and hardware and systems come together and if you next slide um, and uh, the reality is you have all these workers retiring and uh, next slide and you have uh, people coming in who expect digital right how many of you students want to see everything on your smartphone no? Okay. <laughs> it's good if you'll work with us in person, too. We want that. Uh, next slide. Um, and uh, there are a few places online where people can see technology. And so I invite you all to go to GWW Connect. And if you could go forward, our vision is that we could create waves of impact uh, with the next slide because we can move uh, to uh, see what's happening with each other and partner together more easily. Next slide. And uh, what, what you'll find is uh, there are links on the bottom here of these slides, and I'll make, I make them available in this community, is that all of the technology stack for water has already been defined. You, many of you have been working on it, but the Smart Water Networks, all the folks at MWRT and Sam's Group and uh, the World Bank and uh, Chaitin know that there's basically a physical layer, sensing and control communications on top of that, and then data and the analytics that we were hearing about with Svania. Um, and then um, additionally, there's a business case for water, if you could advance to the next slide, um, that allows for us to make water secure, affordable, available, and sustainable. And that business case was developed uh, as an MOU between Israel and California, applying all of the cool technologies to a total water integrated system that saves 38% of the water and produces double digit returns. So all of you who have been saying, like, where's the money in water? People won't pay for water, but they will 
pay for energy, for health, for uh, construction projects, for a new home that has efficient plumbing. And so all of those things, if we go to market that way, we can get people to then invest in the efficient technologies. And uh, um, next slide, we'll just go through four quick wins. And we'll go through these slides pretty quickly. So uh, basically, all of these are just under $15,000. You can implement them. They have an ROI as fast as a day. So if you want to get someone to uh, get moving on water technologies, try any one of these. And the goal is that you go move from implementing within 10 to 30 years to a one to three year window of seeing a big impact. And I know that sounds unbelievable, but with AI and artificial intelligence and technology applied, it is happening. So next slide. Um, uh, and as I said, you can find all of this at gwwconnect.com. Next slide. And uh, one quick win is that we can know artificial intelligence on our sewers and all the pipes in their system can tell you immediately before something happens so that you can get repair staff out and fix something. And um, their technologies, um, Smart Cities in India, GAIA, um, um, IN tells you how to mobilize forces across the city. But um, next slide, please. Uh, also, in the meter data, we aren't engaging customers with water. If we understood actually the customer use, we would not have to build massive pipes. We'd know how to build to fit their needs. And uh, there's a company up in the UK that has 400,000 people engaged in understanding their water use behind the meter. And that informs and allows us to manage demand. Next slide. Slide. And uh, that shows how it's working. We're now rolling it out in the United States. I'd say this is a big data move that allows everyone to create an understanding of what the customer actually needs in water and allows you to actually engage the customer in telling you what they want. Like, do they want to remodel their kitchen? Can you give them credit? Can you help them um, uh, do a landscape? And they, everyone who uses this in the U.S., they can save 30 to $300. In the, in here, you can probably save 15 to 150 by understanding your optimization opportunities. Next slide, please. Um, water from air. There is six times the water in all the rivers in the United S in the world uh, exists in the air. We aren't tapping that water yet well. And the reason why is because it's very energy um, 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 intense, but new technology is now allowing for water from air to be delivered to emergency sites through WaterGen. A company I'm working with is harvesting water in the desert. On the far right, next year at this time, you will see devices on countertops that are delivering four to six liters to individual homes, completely free of contamination because the water from the air is pure. And that's a whole new area to augment, to address scarcity and address contamination. Next slide. And uh, the issue is with sustainability, in order to make all this stuff happen, we all have to work together. And uh, we're quite often we're working in our silos, our municipal groups, our technology groups, our uh, government NGOs. But uh, a water system involves everyone across silos. And uh, so uh, that's our goal in uh, creating a connection hub. If you could go to the next slide. So um, what I just shared was that you have a tech stack, you have a business case, so people are asking you to make a business case. I have Excel spreadsheets and things that can enable you to do that. Uh, we have four quick wins that deliver security, affordability, availability, and sustainability. And uh, these uh, can be accomplished as, as short as six minutes. If you go onto this site, it's less than six minutes. If you do the app to find out how people use water, that's less than six minutes. If you want to buy a water harvesting machine, that'll be um, on your countertop producing water, no pipes required in a day once they're available, or you can go buy one right now at Aquaboy. And then if you want to um, get AI for infrastructure, talk to Vlani right here, or talk to, um, let me know, I can refer you to people, and people right out here in the exhibit areas have that capability. So next slide. 
Our goal is we should not be fishing anymore. Next slide. We should all be together finding each other, knowing who's working on you know, groundwater resources, who's working on uh, efficient wastewater processing. And uh, we can find it all here. I invite you to connect and uh, uh, share with each other. We'll be keeping this up after the conference. So if you have questions, I'm inviting everyone who has a presentation to share it if you don't know how or want help. I'm happy to do that. So I'm Mary Eichert, Global Water Works, wanting to help you and all of us make water work for the future. Thank you. Well, thank you very much.